Okay, hello booktube, I'm doing a tag video today, don't worry, I haven't forgotten about it, I did know I was tagged, totally, by both Ollie Bliss and Bookie Laura, and I'm not in focus. I've done, I've done the tag, see, I just haven't, you know, read it out for you guys yet, so that's a thing. <laughs> I do want to say, I do pay attention, Ollie. I do watch all the way to the end of your videos, just not straight away all the time. I have known I'm tagged and it just takes me a long time, okay? The first question is tropes that annoy you, and I've got a whole list written here. It's little, little ones. It's got Insta Love, which of course I got from the guy who invented this tag, and I was just like, yes, that's exactly it, I'm so sick of that. And then because my brain latched onto the idea of being sick of the love trope, I then wrote Love Triangle, Hetero Love. Uh, love as the main theme, so basically all romance, and then I've also written underrated friendships. Platonic love can be really really strong and quite a powerful motivating force with people, and I think that gets overlooked a lot. So the second question says underrated writers. Now, you're all probably not gonna like me for this. It's, it's JK Rowling. Hear me out. I love Harry Potter, right? I grew up going to the mall, waiting to go and get the next book at midnight on my birthday when it came out. Oh my god, so excited, dressed up, wizard hats, everything. However, having tried to reread Harry Potter, I actually can't do it. I think I built up this crazy world in my head and her writing wasn't as big as her world. I think she took the best of everything and put it all together into one amazing story, which, you know, is amazing, and I'm not saying she's bad, I'm just saying that maybe she is a little bit less good than... Okay, she's a really important character in literature as an author, but I think her writing style actually... While it's great for first reading, the second time around I just didn't feel it. I couldn't get back into it. I didn't get immersed back into the world, I was like, oh, I know the story, I just feel like this is all unnecessary now. I don't often reread things, but if I do choose to reread something, I usually get just as much into it, or a little bit less, but I just couldn't do it with Harry Potter. I think it follows a lot of classic, like, tropes, like the Chosen One and the weird love triangle where Ron thought that Harry was with Hermione and that was just stupid. On reread, I didn't think she was quite as cracked up as my memory made her to be. I have a nostalgia for her that makes her up on a pedestal and I think a lot of people are like that as well and I think that if we took a step back, removed our deep personal love for all things Harry Potter and JK Rowling, we might actually look at it a bit differently. That's... that's all I'm gonna say. I still love her, don't worry, I still love Harry Potter. Especially did you read the new play? Ugh. The next question is least favourite since joining booktube and that would have to be The Girl on the Train. I just... It wasn't for me, it wasn't my style, I didn't like it, I didn't like any of the characters, I didn't like the writing style, I did stick it through all the way to the end, but yeah, that's least favourite. <laughs> the next question is a book with a terrible end that completely ruined it for you. Just saying. It could have gone differently. It really could have. I just... Way to destroy my entire world, John. I like your new book much better. Turtles all the way down. Question number five is fictional characters that shouldn't be dead and, well, I'm not straying far from the first answer for this because... My eternal grief. I'm so upset. I will always be upset. Always. I, cr I, I cry every time. Still. Still to this day. I've seen the musical twice, and granted I didn't cry as much in the musicals, that was more tears of pure joy because of what was happening around me, but in the movie, like, I've seen that movie many, many times, and I still cry when it comes, when it comes to Mufasa. Like, I just cannot deal. Cannot deal. So the next one says, Bookish Pet Peeves, and I've written a little mini essay, so I'm just gonna read that out. When you don't crack the spine. Like, how? How do you read a book without opening it? Crazy people. Also, when I have to stop and look up a word. And also, when I forget characters. So if there's too many characters going on and I don't know who I'm supposed to be following. Like, you know when they've got too many characters and you're just like, but wait, who was that again? Or they've got similar names? That's frustrating. Uh, also, characters whose names are similar. Oh, I just said that. Also, when the next book in the series has a time jump. Oh, a wet dream of mine is when you're reading a book and it just picks up straight next line. So just exactly where you left off. So great. That just makes me so happy. So if you can just not have three years later 
blah 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 blah. That would be great. I'm like, yeah, but what happened in those three years? Character development, guys. Anything could have happened. I need to know. Oh, and then I've just also got lack of meaningful friendship relationships again. I also don't like it when people complain about shelving systems, especially persons, people's personal shelving systems. Like, I know where the books are on my shelves. They're in no particular order. They're not alphabetical, colorful, anything like that. But if you go, where's the fault now stars, I can go pick it out of the bunch. And at one point it was by books I read last year and books I'm going to read this year, which it isn't anymore because I've just put things back in different places and that's okay. Bookshelves are allowed to be messy, guys. They're allowed to just be cluttered. They're allowed to be full of books. That's the point. Just so full of books. <sighs> I don't like empty bookshelves. Anyway, rant over. Number seven, books that need more recognition. Now, I don't have the actual book for this because I think I've lent it to someone over the years and I haven't rebought it and I can't find it and I don't know who that was. So. I'm just going to say Peter Moore, who is a travel writer, and he wrote Room with a View, which just is such a great book. It's his journey on a Vespa through Italy, and it was just so beautiful and hilarious. The closest thing to real uh, non-fiction that I read is travel writing, and only when it's comical. And not many people have read him that I know, so yeah, Room with a View. This is Room by the Sea, which is kind of a sequel when he did it again. But it, he just paints the scene so well, and you really feel immersed into the culture and the characters that he builds up really quickly and then they're gone because that's what happens with traveling you meet amazing characters and then you just leave them there to live out the rest of their lives and you may never see them again or maybe you go back and visit them who knows okay there's another little rant written here so the question is censorship and burning of books I can just imagine what I thought about that no don't do it I don't even like it when you've got two copies of a book right? And then you make art out of one. Oh, but you're destroying literature. Even though I know that there are millions and millions of copies of Harry Potter or there's something precious about books and when people just make art out of them, I may... Look, I love it. I think it's visually really, really pretty, but the other... Oh, the destruction. The destruction's too much. Anyway, censorship and banning books. No. If you don't want to see that content, then don't read the book. Like all art, it's not about whether you are triggered or not. The artwork is about itself. If you don't like it, look away. Oh no, that sounds awfully Aussie Bogan, like, if you don't love it, leave. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. Please don't burn my books. Books aren't dangerous, it's the ideas they contain. That any destruction of any sort of literature or book is really quite sad, and once I went to my friend's house, and her mum had all these Mills and Boone books that she didn't need anymore, and a bonfire, and she was just, like, happily using them. And I was just like, I'm not sure I'm okay with this. But to be fair on myself and my conscience and people who do that sort of thing, I also joined in because it was happening anyway and I was like, took the opportunity to burn a book. I still, you know, it's still a moment that stays with me. Um, but it did feel a little bit liberating. So I guess if you're burning a flag or a policy or something like that, that you truly are against, then yeah, sure. Make sure there's still a copy left in the library though, guys. Don't burn down the library. That's the saddest thing ever. There has to be multiple copies if you want to destroy a book in any way. And even then, I frown upon it. All right, so I've done the tag. The next question is just literally who do you tag, but I don't have anyone left to tag because everyone who is my friend here, you all have already done it and maybe even tagged me in it. So maybe I should make more friends? I don't know how to do that. I mean, I know how to do that, but I don't have much time. One video a week is all I can manage, and if I can get to two, I will, but at the moment, life's pretty hectic. <laughs> Thanks so much for tagging me, guys. I really, really enjoy it. I will talk to you all in the future. How do you turn this thing off? Thanks for watching.